Hi everyone, this is Reyes. <laughs> oh, now that's a good waste of alcohol. Oh. Where'd that tissue box go? <laughs> I know, I dropped it in the last ah, one. I have 151 in my eye. Hi everyone, this is Ray, some of you might know me as Tiki with Ray, and today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. A lot of times we're talking about Tiki drinks, Tiki bars, Tiki mugs, but today we're going to talk about Tiki games. Tiki games! And as I'm looking at Jeannie's collection, I was amazed of the amount of different Tiki games there are. There isn't just one, there's several. And... Jeannie, well, give us a little introduction about all these tiki games that you have. Well, you know, if you're in your bar and you're drinking and you're having fun with your friends, you might want to play a game, too. So, um... No one's going to cheat. <laughs> we might, after a while, not be able to keep score. <laughs> so, I think it's super fun to have games that are themed to the tiki bar in the tiki bar. Yeah. And so we play a lot of family games because our original game console was a table and four chairs. How, so. how old are you, Gene? I'm ancient. I'm like, the, is it? What was I'm it? like the Crypt Keeper. Uh -oh. <laughs> Tales from the Crypt. So, You're not, come on, Gene. So, well, I am old enough that Fireball Island was deeply out there and in play when I was, you know, in high school. So What's Fireball Island? I have an early Fireball Island set. I got it modernly and I had buy piece by piece because they're incredibly expensive for some reason. No, wait, in general, like to begin with or because it's rare now? It's rare now because it was a single press um, plastic sheet that made a mountain with oh, wow. an idol on the top and marbles that ran through it and it's super cool. I'm not though as cool and nifty as my bar builder, Larry. Larry Shaw. Larry Shaw. He owns the original one he played with in 1984. Seriously? With all its pieces. He's awesome. I didn't know that about and, him. And he helped me in, in the world of Tiki Games. So, thank you, Larry. So, so with, with, where would you have been able to find me? So, this is Restoration Games put out a new fireball island so it plays like the old one with even more stuff and it's brand new and you can buy it they even have it i think at walmart.com wow, okay. and if you google fireball island the curse of volcar you too can own it and it is a super awesome fun tiki game because it has many variations and a lot of updates and expansions the biggest one to date is this one the wreck of the crimson cutlass which we have out and we will play later and then there are two others in this line there is the last adventurer so that you can have five players instead of four and he looks suspiciously like Indiana an, Jones. an adventurer we know and it has snakes, so I think they've deeply dived into that pot there. And then the other one, that's a smaller edition, is Crouching Tiger, Hidden Bees. <laughs> so they all came out as a big Kickstarter, which is how I got them. Yep. But now, this base game, at least, is available easily on the internet, so you can order it any time. And it's not horribly expensive. If you want a vintage one, it can cost you up to 150 bucks for a playable version. This is like hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, this one is like fifty three to fifty eight dollars, depending so, on where you get it. So back in the day, I mean, the original version. Where oh, would you, it was cheap. But where would you buy it? At? You would have bought it at your your local game store, like Toys R Us or that kind of okay. thing. So, um, it wasn't like a rarefied air. But tiki games are supposed to be fun and silly. Um, can you reach that with Winston on you? Absolutely. You can find them at Goodwill frequently, like I found this one. Shark Attack. Shark Attack. <laughs> and there is actually a motorized shark inside here. And 
you could even turn this into a drinking game if you really were resourceful. That, you know, if you got eaten, yeah, you get a drink. And he is actually Because you're not going to be drinking enough as it is. He's actually quite handsome. There he is. Yum, 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 yum. So... <laughs> So, and it's just silly. These games aren't meant to be like, I come down and I I am going to make myself a better person by learning to play these games and develop my mind. What's that accent? That's not, I don't know. That's my learned adventurer. I don't know. Winston stays. No, these games are for fun. <laughs> They're supposed to be silly. But... There's many forms of tiki. Many of us like kaiju. And, 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 a, and a video, a, a video of genie wouldn't be the same unless if we Tom have, didn't come unless we have Tom. In. Tom, you might as well bring it in. Bring just just bring us the game. <laughs> so I can't I can't hand it to genie. Thanks, Tom. So this one Thanks. is also a modern game, easily access, easily attainable. King of King Tokyo. King of Tokyo. You are a kaiju. And you come in and you pounce on Tokyo and you beat up the other kaijus until they're all gone. And the last one standing in the middle of Tokyo is King of Tokyo. And they also have expansions. So there's the Halloween one where your monsters get costumes. And there's the power-up one where they've introduced new characters such as... Here, take the top one. Pandukai. He's a King of Tokyo. Halloween. Yeah, Halloween up. You get costumes in that one. Really? So you pound the city, and you get to be king of Tokyo. And this one is very fluid for how many players you can play, and it plays pretty quickly. So you can play more than one round at a time. So what's and the story about Bermuda Triangle? This is another ancient creature. That has to be from the 70s. It is. It is. So in Bermuda Triangle, there's actually a magnetic hurricane that crosses the board and it swoops up the little ships inside the, the magnetic hurricane. It attracts the little metal pieces in the ships and it may or may not take your ship as it passes over. And you have to get from port to port with the evil Bermuda Triangle trying to take things apart. So. That's I remember, Bermuda I remember, Triangle. See, I remember like as a as a product of the of a kid in the seventies, the Bermuda Triangle was like the most dangerous place in the world because planes would go into it and then they just never disappear. come out. Supposedly that's Amelia where Amelia Earhart is right now. Yes, but they found out actually that she was lost in the South Pacific and that she made it. Her plane made it down. They actually found pieces of her plane yeah. on an island populated by um, coconut crabs. And I don't know if you know what coconut crabs are, but they are... No, actually, but they sound delicious. They're huge, and they, they can climb trees. Um, they're very talented. I think, and, um, I think Winston wants to take off. They're very, very large. And um, they feel that in her weakened state, after the, um, the plane came down, that she and her co-pilot survived on the island for a while and ended up being eaten by said coconut crabs. So, because okay. there are people that are still searching for Amelia Earhart, and they've found a number of her actual personal items on this island, and what Good. they feel could be her actual genetic material in a Karen. Well, I'm, I'm, that's, so. that's, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that she at least survived a little bit. Yeah. But I remember there was the, remember the TV show in search of mm -hmm. Leonard Nimoy? Oh, yeah. You could Bermuda. never get over that voice. Well, and, and here's the thing. I mean, like, when it comes to Tiki... My introduction to Easter Island and the Moai was that show. Mm. And I'm, it always captured my imagination and being like, what's going on with, you know. And I, just that, the idol. Oh, yeah. And when I got into Tiki and it's like, oh, wow, these are mugs mm -hmm. with, uh, with that idol. And yeah, yeah they're, my, they're, they're my favorite types of mugs. I love Moais. Hey, gang, we'll get back to the Tiki conversation here in just a second. But I want to let you all know they have T-shirts for sale. They are screen printed in America. The artist is Tony Canepa, and uh, they're going for $20 a piece, $25 including shipping. If you're interested in buying one, go to my website, tikiwithray.com, and then there's a tab that says buy a t-shirt. Click on there and just follow the prompts. So uh, thank you very much. And let's get back to the uh, tiki conversation now. Yeah. So what do we got here? So this is a cooperative tiki game. So, and this one's got a timer, the volcano. 
is the timer. And when it goes off, you lose. So you have to work with your team to get the stuff you need off the island and get off the island. And so this one's cooperative. You have to work together. Wow. We've yet to beat this game. And we're pretty dedicated game players. And you and your family's pretty cooperative. Usually. <laughs> I guess not enough for the, that game. And then another one easily available. Regular games can sometimes have a tiki twist. Uno tiki. So this is Uno tiki Uno twist. Uno tiki twist. And um, and they have kind and cruel cards. So the tiki is either smiling or not smiling, and that will help you to how you're going to use it. And I found this one in a bargain bin. So sometimes these specialty games where they've done a tiki twist or something like that to them, it's a regular game, and you can pick them up pretty cheaply because once the you know, once the thing is over, they they get rid of them. I love that game. I love Uno. Yeah, it's so fun. So instead of saying Uno, do you say Aloha? Or? Um, no, the you direct the tiki being um, happy or um, or cruel. Um, he he changes his mood, and it changes how you uh, how he commands the cards to go up or down or do do what they're going to do. But and the tiki actually spins, which is pretty fun. Incredible. This one. It's approved by Mensa, so if you want to improve your mind, you can try Tiki Topple. Tiki Topple. Tiki Topple. It's a, you're making a tiki pole, and only you know the combination that you need to have at the top. And you have to negotiate the tikis up and down with the cards that you're given to somehow end up with your tikis on top at the end of the game. And it's strategy, so it may seem like it's really simple, but depending on your crowd, it can be pretty intense. <laughs> we have had it got good. And, and you've had a couple of drinks in you too. And um, but it's this one is actually very interesting, um, and it's very quick to play as well once you figure it out. And it's good for uh, kids. We played it with Richard when he was eight. They say ten plus here, and it plays two to four players. Most of these games play two to four five maybe six tops so this is a great thing to do when you have just a few people in your bar and you're having a night and an evening and, and you, you want to keep a tiki thing and you want to keep a tiki this one is hard to find but very worth it if you tiki can mountain. in tiki mountain you are one of these actual little tiki tea masks with feet and there's island magic that you can make happen to yourself like Superman sandals and things like that so that you can get over the a uh, uh, lava. Did you just say Superman sandals? I did Superman because they're, they're of course, Hawaiian. And, and the, and the okay. artwork on this is awesome. I don't know who did it, but it's fabulous. It's made by Slugfest Games. And the object of this is you are trying to run up this mountainside, past this lava, so that you can be the one who throws yourself into the volcano oh, to god. protect your island. Oh my god. It's really funny. And we had a blast playing this, and we played it more than time, more than once. Oh no, he is angry. Oh. So, you might try Tiki Mountain. That one is a kick in the pants. And then, of course, we have... The deeply inappropriate games. Oh, those are the games I love. That you can find that are vintage. So I've been assembling this one for a while. Mystic Skull. Mystic Skull. The Game of Voodoo. What? So what's the story with this? So this one. <laughs> That's the coolest looking game box I've ever seen in my life. I know. I'm looking for a pristine one of these. Just know that if you have one, <laughs> you might have my number. Uh, so, you get this board, and it has a stew pot, and a log, and the log goes onto here, like that, and hanging off the log is the said <laughs> mystic skull, and you have your, your, your piece that yeah. tells you what color you are, which is your own personal voodoo doll. And you're trying... <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's great for children. You're trying to get all... Mommy, I want, my, I want green to be my own personal voodoo doll. And you're trying to get in the colored pins. And you do that by 
operating the mystic skull, which is operated by... I thought, at first at first blush, I thought this was a chicken. A bone. It looked like a rubber chicken. A bone in the cauldron that you have to turn. It's deeply disturbing, but... And this was supposed to be for children. Yes. <laughs> I, I have to have a completely functioning one of these in my life. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this, this beats... Uh, this piece battling tops better more than that, you know. Four pins from the bank or trade one of the cards, which has things like white snakes, spiders, a voodoo guy, or a shrunken skull Did with you your neighbor for the choice of more pins. Did you say a voodoo guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? Voodoo practitioner. That's one of your choices. <laughs> So this is this is a long a long ways from from life. Mystic skull, definitely. There are other very choice and inappropriate games out there. If you uh, if you go on Evil Bay, you will find that there are a lot to choose from under board games. And um, all I did was peruse the thing. There's like a game like called Seance. There's um, one where um, there's a uh, and they're old from like the 70s and they have like little teeny records inside them that play. Oh, wow. And so finding ones that function is kind of hard. So there's seance that's like that. They have um, one that's a, it's a mummy game and you're opening the sarcophagi and it plays and you have these little gemstones that you're after. But it's, it, they're a thing. Unbelievable. So, and these games can go for a lot of money or you can buy the parts individually and try to assemble one of your own. Um, there's a bunch of different routes you can do if you like antique games. But there are a lot of people out there that collect them and trade them. So we're gonna we're, we'll see all we'll see on the game board. <laughs> yeah, we haven't been drinking. Not at all. I'm definitely drunk. Little kill devil. <laughs> a lot of kill devil. Winston, are you in or are you out? Um, I don't know. Depends on if I get to be in the pop song chair. Hey, hey <laughs> Chief, that's, uh, that's, 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 that's my seat. <laughs> Winston. So I guess Winston's going to interview you about uh, Tiki Games. Yeah. Um, All right, you got this, Winston? Um, I don't know. Um, I, I suppose I could interview her, but... Um, <laughs> Hey gang, this is Tiki with Ray, and I just want to say thank you very much for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more episodes, click on the subscribe button. And if you like the video, give it a like. That would mean a lot to me. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment in the, uh, the comment section below.